Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the uh, Joint Redevel Redevelopment Commission Town Council Study Session to order for Wednesday, October 20th, 2021. The time is 6.03. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mrs. Steele, would you take roll call, please? Mr. Johnson. Present. Mr. Conley. Present. Mr. Schmidt. Here. Mr. Getzloff. Present. Mrs. Arbonitis. Here. Police Chief Stormaz. Here. Mr. Hansen. Here. Mr. Gorman. Here. Mr. Bolkman. Here. And myself, Robin Teal, present. All right, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thanks for coming tonight. Um, you are why we are here. Uh, we're anxious to get your feedback uh, on the Speedway property. Um, I would like to introduce uh, Karen Lauerman, who's with us tonight. She's the president and CEO of the Lake County Economic Alliance. Thanks, Karen, for being here. Um, at this point, I'd like to turn it over to our town manager, Bob Volkman, who's going to provide a summary on the property, kind of explain some of the pro upfront processes um, <clears throat> of what we're doing uh, with the property and then uh, turn it over to Karen Lauerman and of course more importantly we want to hear from you um, so I think given the amount of people that are here uh, I think what we'd like to do when we get to the Q&A part and you know we want to hear from you all of us the entire council and town staff um, just for the sake of everyone getting an opportunity you know, try to limit maybe to about three minutes, you know, your comment and question, and we'll see how we're doing on time, you know, see if we can do any follow-up, but we do want to hear from, from those who want to speak tonight. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Volkman. Thank you, Kevin. Good, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to lay a little, uh, little groundwork here for the purpose of the meeting. Uh, no decisions can be made here tonight. This is a study session. It is not a public hearing. So no public action can be taken by the council uh, tonight. Um, we're here to, to uh, listen to the residents um, and accept comments. You know, we'd ask you if you're interested in speaking tonight to uh, sign in. There's a sign-in sheet on the corner so that uh, we have, have a record of your name and address. Uh, please, and then we ask you also limit your comments to about three minutes so everybody gets a chance to speak. And, and also, just as a courtesy, if same questions, you know, because I've had these meetings where the same questions gets answered, asked and answered 15 times. So if it's the same question, if you've heard your question asked already, let's not repeat it. Or the same, same with comments. If the comments have been made, let's not repeat them over and over again. We're here to listen so that we want to give everybody the chance to speak. Um, Ileana property. So Ileana, we're, we're actually in a great position. Not many communities have a piece of property like this. It's got a pretty rich history here in the community. Uh, back, I, you know, I think back in the barnstorming days, there was actually an airport there. It was a racetrack since the 40s. In uh, 2004, there was a proposal by the owner, Mike McCooley, to sell it to a developer for residential use. Um, but that, that actually, we kind of, the town did not approve that. They did approach the town to develop that as a townhouse development, wasn't approved. Uh, it might continue to operate it until 2016 when Michael approached the town asking us if we had an interest in the property. He had been trying to market it as a racetrack. Unfortunately, that industry has had, suffered a lot. Uh, a lot of tracks have closed throughout the country and uh, there was no viable buyer for it to continue operating as a racetrack. And it was no longer profitable for him or economically feasible to continue to operate as it. Notice the last couple of years, he never even opened the track. Um, in 2017, we did do a community survey uh, through, I think it was through Survey Monkey or something like that, asking people what they wanted to see happen on this property. And 
Surprisingly, the overwhelming result was the race track. That was number one. But we also heard from various recreational uses. Uh, hospital trauma center was proposed on the site as a suggestion. Drone flying, BMX bike trails, water parks. So we went through the whole gamut of recreational uses. At, at that time, the council's considerations were to develop it for some type of recreational community benefit use. Uh, and preserving the commercial property along US 30 for some type of commercial use. Well, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, we, Northwest Indiana has a huge influx of people from Illinois and a huge interest from the Illinois business community also to relocate to Northwest Indiana. So there's, there's been a, in the last five years, there's been a strong interest in relocation and other opportunities. So the goal here is to just explore all of the opportunities that may are presented to us as a community and make the best decision that benefits the whole community. Uh, certainly a business park creates not only jobs, uh, but also creates a tax base which helps all of us as well. And as in di at different times since we've purchased the property, we've been approached for the whole property as a corporate headquarters. Uh, we've had transportation inquiries, and you know, and most of these, and of course residential. I, I, I get a lot of calls. People want to know if the you know, town would consider selling it for residential use, and so we need to. Town wants to move past all of that, figure out from a planning perspective what to do, and. There has been no decision on a direction of what to do with this property. I know there's a lot, there's a lot of talk on social media that we've done this or that. I'm telling you right now, there has been no decisions made. No action has ever been taken to rezone this property. It's still zone, rezoned institutional, and it, nothing has changed, other than there's no track there anymore. Uh, currently, we're exploring that possibility, is, is that property viable for a business park? Is there interest for that? And uh, we're looking for a developer who can help, in, from a planning perspective, give us an idea you know, that are experts in that field. What could we use this for? What kind of businesses would locate there? What is the market telling us? And, and to that end, we've invited the LCEA, they're the Lake County Economic Alliance, Karen Loriman is the, you know, they're the experts in that field to vet that process. That doesn't mean we're, we're forming a business park. Doesn't mean there's no recreational. There, recreational could be part of that business park. And community needs could be addressed in that business park as well, or there may be no business park. Uh, but I'll, I'll turn this over to Karen later and she can explain more on uh, what the LCA does for Lake County and what types of projects and uses they are uh, getting inquiries about and how that can benefit uh, Sherville as a community and provide uh, job opportunities for our residents. Please understand, we're gathering information. That's all we're doing. Uh, you, you read social media and stuff like that. Yeah, I know there's a lot of stuff on there. If you, you got a question, call us here. We'd be more than happy to talk to you and tell you where we're at. Like I said before, there's no decisions making. We're weighing all of our options and looking at all possibilities. The council also has other properties we're making offers on around Ileana to, to expand that footprint. So th that's been a process we've been working on for about a year now. In addition, the council and the town staff are exploring both business and recreational uses for this site as well as other sites in Sherbrooke. So uh, the town council and the park board have heard the residents' uh, concerns about recreational op opportunities for this community. I know the park board, you know, they're finishing up a $5 million bond issue on improvements in all the parks. Uh, they're talking about splash, they're talking about a splash pad. They had a study session this week about it to locate it in one of our facilities now. But, so we're, we still are looking to grow the recreational opportunities for the community um, and we're still moving in that direction so we're you know we're trying to satisfy both the community's recreational needs and also the business community's needs 
for location and viable properties. So with that, I will turn it over to Karen Lorman from the LCEA to uh, talk about uh, what, what she's bringing to the table and what she envisions. Thank you. Uh, again, my name is Karen Lowerman. I'm president and CEO of the Lake County, Indiana Economic Alliance. We are a private, nonprofit economic development corporation supported by the Lake County Board of Commissioners on behalf of the 19 communities in the unincorporated areas of Lake County, plus uh, the, public, uh, the private sector through private sector investment. Uh, as a nonprofit 501c3, our uh, role and responsibility is to help every community uh, attract and retain jobs and investment and increase their tax base, uh, which benefits all of the communities and residents. Uh, in light of this particular property, we have been approached uh, for the last five years, maybe a little bit more, about what's going on at that particular parcel. Uh, with the uh, decline of race uh, activities, uh, and we know this not only from the racing uh, facilities, uh, the Friday night lights, but we also know this from NASCAR, Chicagoland Motor Speedway, uh, Route 66, and other facilities of similar nature uh, are declining in use uh, for this activity. So with that in mind, uh, we have been asked several times about a business park or something like that. Right now, we have entertained uh, interest and have brought it to the town administration and to uh, the council uh, just information that would include light head or headquarters, technology or related uh, type businesses, life science operations, professional businesses in line with a modern class A business park. Uh, large scale e-commerce, uh, mass distribution facilities, uh, retail and hospitality were not uh, in the plan for this uh, particular area of Cherville. Uh, we have heard that not only from the council and administration, but that came from some feedback from the community residents, and we take that uh, back to our uh, interested parties to let them know that. Um, in my humble opinion, uh, the overall objectives this evening is to, for me to hear from you so that I can incorporate your comments and your thoughts into how we proceed with a request, a request for proposal from developers. This is, again, not anything set in stone. It's a way for us to find a, a development plan or program uh, that's protective of public health and the environment, that facilitates an enduring and sustainable productive reuse of the property. It ensures the reuse of the property is uh, compatible with the overall land use strategy of Cherville. Uh, and it's uh, the type of businesses that it wants there. It meets uh, building and planned covenants regarding exterior, facade, and appearance, green space, and other things of that nature. Uh, it represents Class A development. And just as a point of reference, Cherville has no Class A business park environment. You have a very small business corridor uh, for uh, light manufacturing. Uh, but this would be a little bit different uh, in style and uh, resident or tenant companies. Uh, and, and most importantly, uh, the goal is to find a partner developer that will work with the town, the council, and uh, in cooperation with community partners as appropriate, uh, the best and highest use for the property. So my role is to facilitate uh, this particular uh, engagement um, we are here in support of what Cherville wants. Uh, that's why we're here. Um, this is not a, uh, it's not, we're pushing this as a business park development, but the idea is to bring this to light so that everyone, uh, that we can create a win-win situation, increase the tax base, incorporate the needs and, and wants of the community, but at the same time, as Mr. Volkman said, there are other things that Cherville has planned for the surrounding acreage and other opportunities for recreation. So how do we make a business park fit into this particular area, but make it fit into Cherville's expectations? 
Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lowerman. At this point, we'd like to hear from you. If you'd like to step up and make a comment, we do have a sign-in sheet. For those of you who'd like to come up to the podium uh, to state your name and address, just for the record, for our minutes. Um, and I think just for some semblance of order, uh, why don't we go by row? Uh, so at this point, if there's anyone in this first row that would like to step up and make a comment or ask a question. How's it going? I'm Hi. Bob Rorty. I've met uh, a lot of you before. Um, so my concern is obviously once again is you know that we do tie it in to the surrounding areas with the youth baseball, the softball, and the soccer fields. Now, I, there's been some talk that there's some other properties now that might be used for recreational use. Is, are these properties right around this area to tie it all together, or is it somewhere else? Um, would be one of my questions. And then just with a business park in my concern with that is if you build this big business park, you know, will it, will it not be full? You know, I still think with COVID and just in general that some businesses are shifting to more of a work from home or a hybrid situation um, where tenant occupancy is less than it's ever been. So part of my concern is just if something like that goes in that it, it doesn't turn out as well as we would hope. Um, and then I know there was mention of the light manufacturing, uh, like on the water bill and previously, you know, with having all the youth stuff right there in subdivisions, you know, there is a concern what type of manufacturing is going on and what what it's releasing out into the environment. But I'll keep it quick. I just hope you guys find something to, it's, it's a good space, right? And like I've expressed in the past, you have a lot of outdoor rec stuff there that you know. hopefully we can tie it in. Like I said, I don't know where these other properties are that were mentioned today, but um, you know, I, I feel like it's ideal and then also I'm assuming some of the property being bought is right next to the baseball fields to release traffic onto Roarman because we don't want more on 30. So just what is that going to do to Roarman when you have two lanes, a bike trail right there and all that. Um, so just, yeah. that's all I got today. Great, great thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in this first row? Row number two? Uh, what, are you guys gonna take all the questions now and then answer after, or are you answering as we ask? We could, we could answer as we go. Okay, all right. You know, um, best we can, but you know, the point of tonight is, you know, we wanna listen to all of you and make sure we capture every detail you know, of your thoughts. Okay. Um, as Mr. Volkman said, the RFP hasn't even gone out yet, right? No decisions have been made. Um, if you recall, we had a couple of public hearings on consideration of us pulling out of the IURC, and our residents are pretty clear. You know, we came to the same conclusion, obviously, and voted to remain where we were. So your input does matter. Okay. Um, so I. From just from my understanding, are you guys like the idea people and then you guys are the decision makers? Is that kind of how it works? <laughs> I, th I think that goes hand in hand. Um, you know, like even within a, you know, right now, in your comments were great because that's why you need to get partnered with someone so you get a concept of what could this property look like. And part of that concept could be recreation. There's no question about it. There, there may be a recreational use that takes part of that concept. So we don't know until we get to that point. And certainly there'll be more public hearings um, and opportunities for everybody to see the concept as it comes back and comment again. So this is like step one of a long, much longer process. Okay. 
Um, and so have you guys looked in the area of Northwest Indiana uh, to see how many businesses like you're proposing to build are, have vacancies or how many businesses are looking to come in? Because I feel like we have some business parks that aren't full right now. So I'm wondering if you guys have looked into that. That could be said for the retail space in town. There could be some retail space that's not filled. Uh, this is entirely different. We're not interested in retail for this property. Um, the beauty of the RFP process is, you know, we don't know what the responses are going to be. You know, the responses might not even include a business park. It could be a recreational amenity. Okay. Uh, that's the beauty of this process. You know, we, we, we rely on the creativity of the interested buyer of the property. And then we decide with you if we want to partner with that developer or not, if it's a good fit for what we want to do. Okay. You know, that's the, there's a process, there's a method and a madness to this. When a muni municipality owns a piece of property, we can't just select a buyer. We have to go through this, this process. Okay. Um, but one, um, one thing we did agree on, though, is no retail, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, and no restaurants. Right. Okay. The 41 so, corridor does a nice job of that already. <laughs> So can, can we have an idea then of what you guys, so no restaurants, no, no strip malls, no strip malls, no retail. So do you, can you guys give us an idea of what each of you kind of envision for this space? So I, I could speak, you know, for myself, you know, right now, like we said, part of it is an unknown because we don't know what the responses are going to be. You know, we've talked about a business park, you know, originally when we purchased the property, we thought about developing the front frontage part along 30 and then expanding Roman Park. Well, then interest grew, mm -hmm. you know, of the property. So we thought, okay, let's go through this process and see, you know, what interested parties really are out there. And if we're gonna put a business park there, they're gonna have to be a viable business. You know, that, that's part of the control that we have, you know, to study that business, to look at their viability uh, before we even, you know, you know, partner to purchase the property. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the last thing we want. You know, it, it's, it's, it's not good for the town. You know, we do want to kind of expand our property tax base if we can with this, right? To keep our property taxes low. Um, you know, we use taxpayer dollars to purchase the property. You know, part of the thought process was, you know, getting a return on that investment. Because value has increased, you know, over time. And those are all taxpayer dollars that we could realize for our residents that we can use for park amenities, you know, as, as an option. So, um, okay, we won't, we won't really know until, A, we get all of your comments today in the direction that we want to go. And if the RFP goes out, we'll see what we get. You know, we may get three responses and we, we may not like any of them. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why we're having this meeting tonight. Ma'am, can you have your room? name and address, please? Oh, uh, Jen Wilson. Oh, do you want me to write it? Yes, thank you. Did, did you sign in, sir? I did. Okay, thank you. Anyone else in row two? They'd like to come up? There's no age requirement. And Kev <laughs> Kevin, I have a comment, too, okay. for, for everybody. One thing to keep in mind, you know, when we bought this property from Mike McCooley, we took control of what's going to happen. If this had been purchased by a developer, they would be putting whatever they wanted to put in there. It could be residential, it could be anything at all that, you know, they would be petitioning and following our, our zoning ordinance, but they could be anything. We wouldn't have this opportunity to select the future of our community. And also, Bob, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the town council bought this property. It wasn't bought by the park district, otherwise the park board would have had say on what was going on instead that's, of the council. That's correct. Redevelopment Commission bought it. Yes. I'm going to make this really quick because I'm really nervous right now. You don't have to. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I get nervous. But um, I think that a lot of us in this room um, care a little bit more probably because we all live right behind that subdivision. So all of our children are growing up there and we would like to continue to walk them daily to the park and have even more for them to find friends to do stuff with, especially with COVID, there's not many indoor activities. If we could get something bigger, uh, 
uh, recreational, um, something more for kids, more kid oriented. Um, so my sister is Sarah Newell. I know that you guys have heard all from her. So I was just speaking on her behalf that we all would like to see no more medical buildings. Um, and I didn't know about your business plan, not to do any retail, which I think is good because we're all concerned also about the traffic that could bring into our subdivision and people that we don't necessarily want just traipsing around. So um, yes, yeah, so we would like to see something kid related. And typically with, with a, if we're talking about a corporate park, if you will, you're not gonna see customer interaction. It's more of a, a corporate headquarters, right? You know, so you're not seeing the traffic of an average consumer coming in to buy something and leaving. Uh, I think that's part of the thought process too, depending on, Karen, am I correct? And correct, uh, the idea is that large scale e-commerce distribution, large scale distribution facilities, retail, hospitality, uh, that was not part of the original proposal. Uh, the folks that have approached us are very uh, specific, light, technology-oriented manufacturing, uh, technology or related businesses, life science and professional operations. This was not uh, intended, at least the people that have approached us over the last five years have not been medical or retail related because that has been previously decided by the, the council as they're not their preference. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to quickly address was the question about uh, have we checked Northwest Indiana for any other business parks? I was previously with the Regional Economic Development Group for seven counties. Uh, Sherrillville is uniquely positioned because of its location and proximity to the border that the business parks beyond Sherrillville uh, are completely full. And to ask about the types of businesses that come in, in 2021, currently, uh, LCEA has facilitated over half a billion dollars of investment thus far. So if you're worried about an empty business park, I would, I would strongly recommend um, that you take a look at some of the things that we've done. You can take a look in the Times and see those types of things. Um, we bring in development money, but again, this is only in concert with what the council and the administration would like to accomplish based on your comments this evening. Okay, thank you. Thanks for listening. Basically, we want like a big wicker park. That's what we would like to see, okay. me and my friends. A bulldog park. Did you sign in, sure. young lady? Sure. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Bob, excuse Mr. President. Yes. Can, can we get can we get her name? She's she's signing. Yeah, she's signing in right now, Tom. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, hello. Hi. Um, so my question, um, comment kind of pertains please to. Please use the microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you can it's, take it out of the holder. Just it's pull a it little out. short for me. <laughs> Just pull it out. Okay. There you I'm. Go. I, no. That's fine. Wow, this is nice. Um, okay. So my my want. question kind of pertains to you've discussed. It seems like you're kind of dead set, your, your focus seems to be particular on the idea of this business park that seems to be where you want to head. So we'll see how, you know, what, what the response I'm saying is. right now, the idea that, that seems to be coming forth is you want to put this proposal out and that's where you're saying, this is where we're going to go. We'll see what we get back and then go from there. So I'm assuming that somewhere along the way, um, there has to have been a discussion about if we don't see what we want coming back to us, how else are we going to get our return on investment? Um, so we've heard from you that this is like, you know, you've said that this is a, a, the business park is like the front runner right now of maybe the easiest or, or the, um, the, the number one way that you're seeing how to make that money back. Do you have, or can you share with us what other ideas you've tossed around or other people on the council, what ideas they have or what they have brought to the table to, or as a group, what you have shared with each other, what you've, other things you've thought of that would also bring in 
that return on investment besides a business park in case you don't get that offer back that you like? What other ideas are out there? Mr. President? Yes. Um, originally, when we first bought the property, uh, we talked about selling the, the front, the upper half by 30 as commercial property and then take the rest of it and invest it into the park. Um, but like we said, times have changed. It, it is really the most prime piece of property that Cherville has left. Mm -hmm. So we just want to make sure that it is utilized in the best possible way for the community and, you know, and the residents that live here and to make sure that um, if there's a chance of bringing some type of business in there that is going to maintain keeping the tax base low here in Cherville, we definitely want to do that. Um, but like it was said earlier tonight, this is really in the very early stages. So the whole purpose, and yes, we have talked about throwing ideas out there. Now we really want to see who is going to kind of uh, fight, as they say. And I, I understand that. But, but if, if we don't like what we see, then as far as I'm concerned, I think we should go back to the original plan and sell the front of it and uh, take the rest of it and, and do whatever we see fit as far as what amenities we want to bring back to the park. And does everyone on the council have that same vision? Do, I, we, I, do we know? I mean, is that something we can ask? Like, Mr. President, sure. they'll, they'll speak. <laughs> I mean, is that, someone, is that something that they can share? Like, do we know where everyone stands on this? Mr. Mr. President, um, yeah, t and to answer your question, there's been, there's been a lot of thought. Uh, and, and, one of your, and one of the options, and, I, and I'm a big supporter in it, um, one, of the, uh, one of the options would be to make a complete recreation park. Uh, the, the land is there to do a lot of things. Cherville gets um, our, our families and children, you know, leave Cherville a lot to go do other things. We also leave Cherville to go um, watch uh, concerts. We, we, our kids leave Cherville to play indoor soccer. Our kids leave Cherville to play on turf fields. Um, so there's that option, and I'm sure there's developers out there that's interested in, in, in recreation development. And like Mr. Conley said, we will, we'll, well, I'm sure we're going to hear from them there's probably developers out there that would be willing to partner to possibly bring total recreation there. But we also have the issue too that, that we have more land around there that, that we're looking at and it's, we could have 51 acres or we could have 90 acres. So when you have that big a difference, we're at that early stage, we don't really know where we're at on that. But to answer your question, there's, other, there's definitely other options. Um, and like Mr. Conley said, we might not be happy with any of the proposals from the business park. And, we might, and like Mr. Getzoff said, we might go back to the original plan and sell the, the front of it strictly for retail. You could have, believe me, you could probably have a restaurant and a, and a store or, some, or something right up on Route 30 pretty quick. Uh, because really there's, there's not a lot of restaurants like that in, on that side of Cherville. Right. So if that's what you wanted to do. So there's a, there's a lot of different options. Okay. And, and, um, and one of them is, is total recreation and that's, and that's, that, could, that could possibly happen. Um, as a resident of the subdivision behind there, um, I would like to see something of that nature develop there rather than a business park. Um, you know, I, I, I am a supporter that goes to other towns to, to do activities, to do events. I take my family. We spend a lot of money in Valpo, in Crown Point, in Highland, in Whiting. Um, you know, they have events, they have vendors, they have things that we do that we go and spend sometimes a couple hundred dollars in a day um, patronizing other towns that is money that we could be spending in our own town if those opportunities were there for us to do. Um, you know, that's my opinion. I'd, I'd like to see more family-friendly event type things for us to offer to our, our own town to, for other people to come in and enjoy um, and, and have that type of a 
return on the investment to the land instead of um, you know, a light industrial business park. I think a lot of, not only the people in the subdivision that we share, but I think the town in general would also like to see that we have a lot of traffic through our neighborhood during the fireworks um, time when you guys do the great job with the fireworks. It draws a lot of people. Um, I think we could replicate that in a great way and bring a lot of people and money back to the town. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, I'd, I'd like to say in, 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 um, in addition to what Tom said, um, for me, this process is important to gather all the information needed to support these residents, like this gal that just spoke right here, um, so that we can make sure that what, they, what we do put there works for them as well. I mean, that community around there and all the residents around there have, have really weighed in a lot of information to us about what they would like um, as far as recreation. And I agree with what you said that I'm hoping that we find a way to put recreation and community use there. For me, I'm not sold on. And I think I'm safe to park. say that's the collective opinion of yes, the five of us. We need to make sure that, yep, that we do support you all. Anyone else in the second row? Ryan Marks, live at 11, uh, 1112 Murfield in Cherville. I got two questions about the business park. One, have you guys done any studies on the amount of tax revenue that it would bring and the amount of jobs it would bring to Cherville? Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to use the mic. Ryan Marks, 1112 Murfield in Cherville. Um, I had two questions about the business park. First question is, have you guys done any studies about what kind of jobs it would bring and what type of jobs it would bring to the Cherville community? And also, what type of tax revenue it would bring to the Cherville community? On the tax revenue side, have we looked at that? We have, oh, excuse me, we have. And uh, commercial land is taxed at 3%. All of the residents pay 1% of the current assessed value on your homes. So Cherville will increase its tax base based on the investment level in any vertical construction. Uh, park land is not taxable, it's institutional. Uh, we haven't done a complete study because we don't know the uh, value of the buildings that might be put there, Mr. Marks. Uh, but in addition to that, the estimate is that between 300 and 400 people, depending on the type of business, or uh, 150 to about 250, again, depending on the types of businesses that you're looking at. Uh, the average wage for the state of Indiana currently uh, is less than Lake County. The average wage for Lake County, Indiana is about 2350 per hour. And uh, subsequently, the types of jobs that we would be looking in for this business park, sir, would be somewhere uh, at that range or even higher because these would be, again, technology-related, high-level jobs, uh, headquarters, things of that nature. And again, uh, Mr. Marks, when it comes to that, um, the council does have final say because there'll be a development agreement and things of that nature with whomever they choose if they choose that business park option. Does that answer your question, sir? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you. We're still, I think, I think in row two. I'm short, so I can talk right into it. <laughs> John Concierge, I live on Autumn Drive in Harvest Acres. Um, Rorman Park, as though it looks really big, truthfully, it's worthless to 90% of the community because if you look, baseball park, which aren't showing there, are private, they lease them out. And all that big green space there is soccer parks. So really by expanding back into Ileana, even if you didn't take it all like you're talking about the frontage, and you got all that other property on 30 that's been for sale for gosh knows how long. And there's even another piece of property that the people want to sell that goes from Roermond alongside the property. So if you could incorporate it somehow into there, so you keep the business park away from the subdivisions and Norman Park, that would be great. Also, as for, you say stuff isn't vacant, um, Franciscan built that, um, I don't know what you want to call it, professional buildings across the street on 30, 
and I think it's probably 10, 12 years old now, and I think they have two tenants out of 10. It's never been full, never been occupied. And there is a lot of other stuff. I mean, Cheryl has industrial, has business, it has the 41 corridor, the 30 corridor. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff still going up. I know it's losing tax base, but once the land is gone, the land is gone. There's, can't make more land. Cheryl's not gonna get any bigger. You can't do anything to make Cheryl have more park land or more place for its residents. Uh, like Wicker Park, somebody mentioned a bigger Wicker Park. Well, Wicker Park's got a big golf course there, but in that little area they have, they have a concert hall where they have concerts once or twice a week. They have a splash pad, and people come from Cherville, Hammond, Munster, Dyer, every place to go there because it's there. Mm -hmm. And as they say, if you build it, they'll come. You build an industrial park, nobody's come, except for a few more employees. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're moving on to row three. Hi, my name is Betsy Hunt. Um, Put the microphone down a little bit. Thank you. Okay. So I would think from listening to everyone that I would think there's a way that this could be done so that the businesses could be on Route 30 it's an awful lot of acreage, right? So I would think that the businesses could be more towards route on Route 30 and perhaps right behind there could be some kind of, if you wanted a business park, but that the whole rest of it would be, you know, something like a Wicker Park or, you know, keep in mind 10,000 people turn 65 every day. So it'd be really nice to have a place for seniors you know, along with the children, right? So whether it would be a Bulldog Park or a Wicker Park or just something, I didn't realize the park situ there was a park situation, you know, as far as it was kind of landlocked back there. Mm -hmm. So I would think that there'd be enough acreage to do, to keep the business aspect of it on Route 30 and the um, recreational all of that to take up the majority of it to have some kind of a win-win so thank you we're still in row three if anyone else would like to come up row four james rourke 2936 morningside drive shareville Precinct 18. Uh, question of clarification. I understand, did I understand you correctly saying that there's not going to be a distribution center as part of this? Correct, it's not included in the draft RFP because the town does not want to increase traffic of that nature. Amen, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, same row, row four. Row five. My name's Matt Merslock, uh, 2903 Morningside Drive, right down the street from that gentleman. Um, I had uh, five pages worth of stuff that I wanted to talk about, but you're telling me I got three minutes, so I guess I'll, I'll leave it short. Oh, that's okay, thanks, Mom. Um, so first I wanted to say thank you to Tom and Caleb. Um, thank you for spending the time with us last month. Um, if, if you guys aren't aware, uh, these two gentlemen met with about 40 of us, 42 of us at Rorman Park um, to, to talk about this very subject. And uh, that, was, uh, that was very good and we do appreciate your time. Um, I guess the biggest thing that, and I think we had some good conversations that, that evening, um, and we as uh, residents of Cherville made some good points. Um, and I think the biggest thing that we wanted to drive to you guys is that we don't want a business park. We definitely don't want it. Um, and and uh, no offense, ma'am, but I would like to challenge you on your statement about uh, that all of the buildings will be full and there shouldn't be a, an issue doing that. 
Um, because if you drive through one of the examples that Caleb gave us that what you guys want to put there is very similar to out in Crown Point and the Maryville off the Broadway corridor there, um, the Ameriplex uh, complex. And actually, I just drove through there yesterday. And maybe you can clarify the difference between what we're trying to put here and what that is. But there is a lot of what I would classify as, as businesses of similar to what you're explaining that are empty. I mean, there are a lot of uh, signs on the side of the road. Actually, the old uh, Purdue Technology Building and the Ivy Tech Building that's there, there's a big giant sign right off Broadway that says uh, retail space or uh, uh, office space for rent. Um, and there's a lot of signs about where they're building more of, of what I believe is the exact same thing you're trying to build here out there. Everywhere you drive, there's a billboard that says, coming soon, you know, call us for rent, office space. And, uh, and even further on down on, on Broadway, uh, right behind where Tomato Bar is, they're trying to build something like that. And, and I'm, sure, I'm sure you guys are looking at this and you're thinking, oh man, that's great. How can, how can Charitable, why can't Charitable get something like that? Um, they're not that far away from us. So I understand you're saying we're closer to the border, but it's actually, in my opinion, easier to get there from Illinois than it would be to get where we're talking from Illinois because you just come right across the expressway and down. So um, I, I understand you guys are trying to, to oh, let's, let's get something like that in a shareable. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong, but we're doing fine financially, right? We don't, we're not hurting. We have a balanced budget, right? We're not running a deficit. So wh why, why, are, why are we looking to, to, to do this even more and, and, and try and improve on, on something like that when, you know, I, I look at that as competition to us. I mean, if, if I'm a business and I'm coming in the area and, and I'm looking at, okay, I got all of that opportunity down at Broadway and Crown Point, I'm not going to go to, no offense, but I'm not going to go to Shareville because I'm going to go down there where there's a lot more opportunity down there. Uh, the buildings right, side, right outside your subdivision, Kevin, uh, those office complex buildings, that's probably very similar to what we're talking about here too. And a lot of that's empty as well, as, as far as I'm concerned. It, and it's not, it's an eyesore. <laughs> You know, I grew up in that subdivision. My, my parents are here. And, and that's, that's my home. You know, that's my hometown. And, and I remember all of the change that has taken place at that subdivision, right outside that subdivision. You said earlier, the 41 corridor, you know, all those, t all those businesses, shopping. Now, uh, granted, we're not talking about shopping here, but there's still going to be traffic. There's st there's gonna be, I'm sure there's going to be another stoplight, one or two stoplights, and Lord knows we don't need another stoplight. And, and Route 30 right now is somewhat okay for, for travel and, and for, for traffic. Um, we, don't, we don't need more traffic in our area. Um, Burr gets backed up, Klein gets backed up. If we're talking about exiting out on Roman like the gentleman brought up, it's, it's gonna add more traffic. So uh, right now when we moved from Portage to here, we, we really honed in on that subdivision for one big reason, and it's the park. It's the ability to walk to the park. It's the ability to have the track that goes around the park. And, and if we could expand on that, I think my family and all my friends' families and, and, and their kids and their grandchildren and their friends, they can enjoy a much bigger and better park. Um, also, one thing we're, we forgot about is the people. You know, so you're talking about putting a business, business park right by a park where we have kids that are there weekly for soccer games, softball games, baseball games. Uh, what, and they're gonna be there, it's, it's a business, so they're gonna be there Monday through Friday during the day, and, and there's gonna be people there if there's employment. So, so I don't necessarily want that near our kids either. Safety, just sheer safety. And then the other big thing for me is, is the, uh, the value of my home. You know, like I said, we moved there because of the park. So now, if there was a business center there, if there was some giant building there, I probably would have thought twice about that. I probably would have, it would have, I might not have changed my mind, but we probably would have given it some, some further thought. Um, so I'm worried about our home values, and that's huge. That's hitting me in my pocketbook. So, um, Caleb, we, we talked about when last, last month when you were with us that we're not lucky, you know, we're not fortunate to be a, a Valpo or a Crown Point. We don't have a square, we don't have a courthouse, but we have a huge plot of land that we could build something amazing. We could make something amazing that, that people from Valpo or people from Crown Point could come, would wanna come and see our property. 
And, um, you know, I, I watched the August 11th town hall meeting that you guys had here, and there was a gentleman here that talked about uh, uh, making a historical monument or a historical landmark about the racetrack. And that's not a half bad idea either to consider because it could give you grant, government grants um, to, to, and, 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 you know, to make honor of the racetrack. But, but the other thing that took place there uh, that you guys talked about, I think it was our, our superintendent, our park superintendent, he brought up to you guys about this, the softball tournament that we had there. And I'll tell you what, we, I, we drive up and down Roman all the time, and man, that was great to see. That park was packed full of people, and, and he said something like there were people from all the way over to New York that came from all over the country to play there. That's huge. But I think he said one big thing that was very important. He said, if we build it, they will come. And I think that, that takes some merit. I think you guys need to think about that for a minute, because... You know, if we build something there, I guarantee you people, people from Valpo, people from Crown Point, they, they will come and they will see it. So um, I guess I'd like to just ask one thing. I'd like to ask all five of you, if you could, for the record, you know, for all of the residents here in Cherville, you know, state it. Are you for a business park? Is that what you're for? If not, then give, give us your ideas, uh, obviously, you guys, Robin and Tom, you guys have already spoke about a little bit about other ideas of an extracurricular activity type outdoor venue, but Rob, I know Kevin, you're for the business park, Caleb, but if, if you guys could talk a little bit, each, all five of you, a little bit about what your ideas are. Well, so further. let me just, let me just answer him real quick. So the, you know, there, since we purchased a property, there was a lot of ideas that have evolved since then, which kind of led us to this point about considering a business park because of the amount of interest that we receive by corporate headquarters, you know, which is why we're going through this process. So, yes, we've talked about a business park, but once we send out the RFP, if we do that, you know, the responses may not even include anything close to a business park. You know, it could be an outstanding recreational amenity that responds to the RFP. You know, and maybe for part of the acreage, you know, and then we then we retain um, the contiguous acreage to Roman Park already. Um, this goes back, I guess, fundamentally. I'm looking at it at, in a way where, okay, we own the property. We have to go out for bid and see. We don't have to go out for bid, but if we sell the property, we have to go out for bid. Then we have to see what those creative ideas are that come back. You know, so I, I'm anxious to to kind of see. Uh, how this process works and see what the, the responses look like. And as I mentioned, you know, we may get one, we may get six responses. We may not like any of them. So let me ask this question then. So let's say uh, uh, an, an opportunity comes back and one of them is a business park. What's the next step then after that? It's the viability of that business, the type of business. Uh, there's a lot of variables we don't know until we get that response. But you do get a response back. Then do you have to hold another town hall meeting to, well, to explain there, it to all of us? There's public hearings okay. during that process. Absolutely there are. That go through the planning department, though. Yeah, through the it, won't go, it won't go through this entity here until it's ready to be finalized. But it will happen at the planning department. And then when it does come here, we will make sure that there is a presentation done so that people who attend will know what's going to happen. But ultimately, it's your five's final decision. Yes. Yes, yes right? it is. Right? Yes, it is. And, and you, could, you could take our advice and our words into consideration all you want, but ultimately, it's you five are going to say yay or nay on it, right? And the hammer's going to drop. Right. Well, <laughs> we're going to right? listen. We're going to listen. I don't, I don't think we would uh, be spending our time here tonight if, okay. that, if that is the way that this council would act. Okay. I mean, I have uh, been on this board for a long time, and, uh, you know, I live here too. I've been here for 43 years in this community, and uh, I think we've done a lot of great things, but I also think that those things have happened only because we have listened to the residents. Well, I don't necessarily know if I agree with that. <laughs> well, I understand, sir. We can sure. agree to disagree, that's sure. for sure. Sure, that's fair, that's fair. Well, time will tell. So, so can all five of you, for the record, publicly state um, what your views are here and, and give some ideas on what it is that you're looking at in response? Can, is that all right? Can you guys go uh, across Mr. the Chairman, board and do that? We don't, 
if you don't mind. Um, my my uh, view is that we should actually see what's going to happen, of course. Um, and like I said, if um, if we don't see what you know something that is appealing to the residents here in Sharonville, uh, then my opinion is that we take the front of it and we sell it, whether uh, a hotel comes in and buys it or whatever. Uh, and then take the rest of it and use it for park amenities. Okay. Robin? Uh, my opinion is, like I stated, that we, we go through the RFP process and we look at all the options, but I am in favor of recreation, whether it's town-owned or uh, somebody that comes in and offers recreation. It needs to be for community use. That's what the people want. That's where I'm at right now at this juncture. Okay. Thank you. Tom? Um, uh, yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I mentioned earlier. I think. I think. It, I've said from the start that piece of land is ideal for recreation. I mean, we have softball, we have baseball, we have soccer, we have parks. Uh, you go stand in the middle of that field and you look around. And my my feeling is that we should. We have an opportunity to make something great for the town of Sherville, recreation wise. And my opinion is to is to is to do that or 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 come up with a partner that's more than likely you would come up with a partner a business partner that would want to do that okay yeah pretty much the same i want to see what the responses look like you know one may complement the other you know park recreation with a business perhaps but we won't know until we get the responses we just sure. don't know what we're dealing with okay but that's why we're having this open forum you Fair know enough. Mr. President, and one, one more thing that I think is very important and I have here in my notes is, and I've said this from the start, uh, when we turned our legal staff into exploring the, the surrounding property around it uh, to start exploring to see what was for sale and what was not, I still think it's very, very important to have the opportunity to market 51 acres or 90 acres. That's a, that's a big difference. That's, that can bring a lot of different options to you. And I, I don't have a problem with waiting longer uh, to find, find out if staff is going to be able to, and when I say staff, that would be our staff in management plus our legal staff on, on where we're at on, on the other property. Because right now, right now and, you, and you said it before, you're going to have to have a stoplight there for, for any type of major development. And right now, our pro the property there doesn't line up very well for a stoplight. We we need a piece of couple pieces of property there to make it ideal, and I think it's real important that we see the whole picture, uh, and go f and go from there. Yeah, that's the last thing we need is another stoplight. <laughs> Just drive down 41. <laughs> Caleb. Well. Uh we talked quite a bit at the uh, last meeting when you and I were there. Probably a lot of these residents heard me already. Um, so I, I'm of the op opinion personally that in order for this property to really work, we need the additional properties around it. We're looking at, uh, I, I don't know if everybody really even knows what the shape of the Ileana Speedway property is, but it's kind of an L shape. There's not a lot of frontage. There's, there's not a lot of US 30 property. All the property basically is behind it uh, off of US 30. So when you look at the, the Ileana property, that, that property that is the uh, trees and the open field to the left of the entrance, that's not owned by Sherville. So when you're talking about a business development, if all we're marketing is, is the Ileana property, it's all off of 30, basically. It's all in the racetrack area right up next to Rorman Park. And in order for a business park, in my opinion, to work in this area and to accommodate what we want as, as town council for our residents because we want to respond to you guys. We want to accommodate what you, what you expected. We bought this property to add recreation to the area. So in order for us to accommodate that and to make it work, we've got to get that other property. So I anticipate or what I see coming from this is if we can get 90 acres or 75 or 80 acres or whatever, and we can get more frontage and we can get more property to the west there 
and connect over to Roman Park and create a, 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 an area that's developable away from Roman Park and add to Roman Park with recreation, then now we accommodate everybody's goals here. We can add tax base, we can add jobs, we can add amenities, and I, I don't know what amenities are gonna go there, because truthfully, it's not really up to us, it may be up to the parks in the end of the uh, day here. You know, we, I guess we'll end up approving it maybe in the end, but, but they need to know what they can afford to pay for, what they can afford to manage, what they can afford to, to operate in the area. They have a lot of parks already. They're stretched thin. So in order for them to, to make this all work, they're going to have to come up with a plan. We'll have to work with them to come up with that plan. I don't uh, know what will be there, but I want to have that ava availability. And the only way we have that is if we get that other property. So that, that's my goal. I've been pushing, and, and I, everybody's been consistently pushing we got to get this property. we got to be able to, to put together a full plan. We're starting the process now because in order to get the process started and to help us have the leverage to acquire those other properties, we have to have this process started. That's part of our basis for making those offers to buy the other properties. We can't buy them otherwise. The courts won't allow us. We won't have the, the good faith basis to make those offers and support our offers. So that's our goal. We have to start the process here, see what we're gonna see, and, and it's going to incorporate, and, and Karen has already put together a draft RFP. We've looked at it. I've added comments, and we've added some of those comments to it to include common parking to add for our, our Roman Park because our events are, are there, there just isn't enough parking there to add a bike trail extension, to add green space, to add a recreational amenities. Those are things that we're trying to incorporate as a council into our RFP so that we know our developers coming in with the same type of expectation that we have, that we're going to be cooperating to make Roman Park better. What's there? We don't know yet. Developers haven't offered us anything yet. We may not like any of it, and we may say, back to square one, we're starting again. We may like a little bit here, a little bit here, and we may come and, and try and bring them all together with one developer that we think is, is willing to work with us. We don't know yet. Mm -hmm. We gotta start the process. That's what today is. Get feedback, start the process with the RFP, and get it moving. I guess when the, that pamphlet came out uh, last month or the month before on the front page, it, Big bold letters, business park, and I guess I, I really think that that scared a lot of people. Well, I think, yeah, that we started to get feedback from that letter. Okay. And here we are. Good, good. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. I think and, and Caleb, one other thing, if, if maybe we could do an annual meeting like that, that would be Done amazing. deal. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. There's two other members of your family. Do they want to speak? I, I think we're still in row five. I can't tell if there's any more. Row six. Seven. I guess at this point, we'll, I'll leave it open to uh, whomever. Yeah. Can't tell, I don't know. Hello, my name is Charles Russell. I live at 2632 Harvest Court. I've lived there for 34 years. I lived, I started moving in there before you guys even built the park, okay? So you guys have done a great job with the park. And when you guys bought Eliana, I didn't know that that was a hot deal either, but you guys were saying about expanding the park, and I like that, okay? I'm totally against the business, the business park thing, okay? And I'll just let it end there. How's that sound? Because I agree with the one lady that if you guys want to sell the frontage area and for some businesses and get some money off the deal and everything, I think that even though you guys are totally against the restaurants and stuff that you might put there, but if the right businesses go in there and you put in a splash pad, um, you guys should put in a skate park there and name it Ileana, okay? Cause you guys got one downtown in that, right? We have a, we have a down, we have kids that are in our neighborhood that run around on skateboards and they just, all they can do is go up and down the street so they build stuff out on the street to jump off. You know what I mean? It's just 
we need the recreation area now. I really think we need that more than we need a business park. Okay? That's the end of it. Thank you. Anyone else at this point? Clarify, I don't understand the RFP process. I mean, do you send it out as a kind of like a blank, hey, we've got this property and we, what do you, what do you want to build on it? Or do you send it out saying, we're thinking business park, we're thinking recreational? Is it that kind of a thing? Maybe Karen, yeah, maybe Karen. Yeah. Answer. Sure, the plan uh, that I'm, that we understand right now is that we're looking for a developer to work with the community on a plan. And that plan would include some sort of business development, but we've also, as, a, as your council person has said, we have a preferred, uh, prefer like a preferred list that we talk about uh, having um, be agreeable and willing to sign on to Sherville Covenants to develop the property. Uh, assist in adding Sherville's available locations for business attraction. Include access points for Rorman Road within the design plan appropriate to uh, plan commission standards. Uh, potential green space and recreational activity, expansion of the trails, and potentially integrate adjacent properties for future development, expansion, or recreation. So what we do is we put out uh, a, a general call for people that are interested in the initial acreage uh, and then take a look as uh, Councilman Schmidt said, uh, are we going to have that? But uh, as Caleb said, we have to start somewhere and this was the best uh, way to put this. And then what your council uh, people will do, your town administration will take all of those responses. Those will be, uh, for lack of a better term, graded uh, on if they meet the criteria, meet the qualifications, meet the financial stability and sustainability. Do they have businesses that are a, a complement to this type of business development? Things of that nature. Do they meet these requirements? They're graded, uh, as I said, for lack of a better term, against the criteria. They're summarized and brought to your redevelopment commission and your town administration. They review those plans and ultimately uh, they start that process uh, of looking at what they like on one plan, what they like on another plan. Maybe it's not one development plan that they you know, want to follow suit with. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of tweaking and adjustments. That's when your process here in the town takes over through plan commission and, and other, other entities and other committees. That's, that was the plan. This was to help get everything started uh, and take it and see what we could get respondents, you know, respondents to. Maybe it is a business park, but the idea is to find this partner, uh, a development partner that can do many more things than just build buildings, uh, take into consideration again. That's why we're listening. I'm taking a lot of notes. Uh, I'll, I'm going to try and answer uh, for uh, Mr. Volkman all of the questions so that he can get answers to folks if, if you're interested uh, in some of the things that came up this evening if we didn't, ad didn't address them. Uh, yes, sir. Eventually, uh, the plan is for a developer to own the property, but that's... That remains to be seen, sir. We, we have in here uh, a financial structure. Is it going to be, what is their proposal to the town? Because we know what happened to St. John's. They isolated. They went in partnership, and St. John ended up owning a big ice arena. And it was like, you know, and I hate to see that happen to Sheriff. Well, the, I think the idea is that you have a very open council right now to all of these ideas. And again, I've taken lots of notes on, on the concerns and the preferences. And again, when the RFP goes out, it's a public process. Uh, your legal, uh, the town's legal counsel will uh, advertise that. It will be available. And again, it's a, it's a way to start the process for you for whatever comes of this. Uh, 
I'm hoping that there's a happy medium and a win-win for everyone. But again, uh, I'm, I'm doing what I've been asked to do by the town to listen this evening and make sure that the comments are responded to as best we can within the RFP, but also uh, some of those individual questions about uh, other business parks in the area and things of that nature. And just a side comment to the gentleman that asked about Ameriplex at the crossroads. There are only 19 acres left in that business park. Everything else has been sold. And I can guarantee that within the next three to four years, that entire area is going to be full, along with a business park south of that in Crown Point called Point 65. And I'd be happy to further discuss with you economic development in Lake County uh, after this. Correct, 400 acres. All right, I need to ask you to come up and speak in the microphone for the record. I also want to give others a chance to speak too. You know, and, and to... <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Hatt. I live at 2915 Morningside Drive. I, uh, I had an epiphany earlier today. It's about experiences and legacies. I went to McDonald's in Cherubim, met the new owner of the place, talking about renovations and things he's doing. And it, and it kind of hit me because we're coming here today, right? What do we all remember? Experiences. Fifth birthday party there. People want to come to the Speedway. It's a beautiful place. Well, it used to be, right? But now they come to the ballpark. They do things there. They get together. Experiences. Legacy. We own it. It's our tax dollars, right? Cherville sure owns it. Sell it to a developer. Cherville sure don't own it. Legacy. We own it. Let's build experiences. Rorman Park is awesome. The walkways around there. Let's build a pavilion. Let's have a cool space, green space. Green space we can all go to. But I'm not opposed to retail. Experiences, food. They're all going to the ballpark. They're hungry. Let's attract more people to the park to use the space, because it's unused, as it was previously said once. We don't have enough experiences going on there. If we had more things going on there, you'd have more jobs there. You'd have more food being sold there. You'd have more experiences being there. I've been here 42 years. Well, I haven't, actually. I'm 42 years old, but um, <clears throat> I've lived in Chicago. I've lived in Ohio, and in Ohio, They, they have these outdoor green spaces that is retail. And they have some food, they have some, some retail, they have some businesses, they have some, some living spaces, and they, they somehow figured out the green, Beaver Creek, the green, Beaver Creek, Ohio. Really nice. So if we're gonna do this, and this is the beginning process, remember, this is our space. And I'm a businessman just like many of, many of you. 
We need the tax revenue, 100%. Let's go get some of it. Let's get it from the surrounding towns. Let's create an experience for people to come that's a legacy for Cherville moving forward. So I think as a whole, I speak at least from my generation. I live right over there. I walk around the park. It's beautiful, it's safe. Kudos to Cherville for providing a safe and a nice environment really to grow up in. And I, you know, there's a lot of great experiences collectively that, that has to offer to all of us. And as a community member, uh, I would like, I would like to go, well, the concession stand at Roman's all right, right? But if we can have something cooler to go to, you'd get more, more people coming there. And then they would, they would go there and, and have those experiences and we'd be able to attract bigger events and venues is, is what I'm getting at. So I think there's a way to, to pull them all together in a smart way, but, but let's not give up what we own which is the land, and that's it. That's it. You're right about that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Ryan Marks again. So I just got a quick question about the 90 acres, because you guys brought that up. That 90 acres, so the 51 acres is obviously right where the Ileana Speedway is and all that stuff. That 90 acres is where those trees are and everything else, right? And the, and the open space to the west of that. Can those trees and those areas and stuff actually be developed for Business Park, or would they have to be used for, for something else based on what's already there? Because I think there's some utility and an easement and yeah, stuff like that, right? right over that piece of property. Right, so that wouldn't really be very viable to a Business Park for that type of area there. Would that be kind of the green space area that you guys are looking at for that RFP? Possibly. Depends what the development plan is. We just have to see what the plan is and, and go from there. But yeah, I mean, that, that's the concern is that we have a lot of flexibility with more acreage, less, less flexibility if all we have is 51 acres right now. So and one other quick question I had was the covenants for building codes and that types of things. Would these buildings, I guess, what would they have to look like? What would they have to be? Because obviously you don't want an eyesore in the community and I fully understand that, but what types of things would they have to have? Would they have to be brick? Would they have to have, you know, beautiful, beautiful lawns? Would they, you know, because if you go over by right behind the town hall here and stuff and where Midwest Pipe is and some of the other guys, I mean, you don't want that. No. Definitely don't want that. What type of covenants are there to make sure that, that it's going to be a beautiful area and it's not going to be an eyesore for residents? Yes, Mr. Volkman, please. Sure. Ryan, um, none of those have been set. Now, along the, the corridors of 30 and 41, we have what they call an overlay district, which uh, has some architectural standards for, th those were mostly made up for commercial type development. Um, this site here, what I would envision is that if, if a business park came to fruition, it would have a PUD zoning, which would, uh, provide flexibility, but then provides complete oversight by the community of every use that would go in there. But right now what we're looking for, you know, this is tire kicking stage. We're trying to find somebody to come in with a concept. How, how could you lay this out? How would it work? Um, the surrounding properties, and, and looking at them, Caleb's right, you know, you gotta control all of it. Otherwise you're gonna have a patchwork of little parcels left around whatever you do there. And so incorporating all of that uh, vacant property that's around there into a concept, um, whether it be recreational, whether it be business, or a mixture of both, is important to get, you know, so that it has one flavor for the whole, for the whole development. Uh, what would actually be in there? I'm, right now, if you're in the overlay district, you know, you have to have three components in a building. You have to have, you know, you can have steel, glass, masonry, and you know, there's architectural offsets, you know, like building, can't have just you know, a 200 foot long building with a flat facade, it's gotta have offsets. Um, but that, again, is mostly geared towards residential. So it would be interesting to see what type of ideas we get back on ultimately how could you lay, what would this piece of property look like when we're done? We've got a lot of speculation on, on land use here, 
we, that's, what we're, that's why we're doing this. What, what is somebody's idea, somebody that, uh, that does this professionally and can come back to us and say, here's my vision for this property, and then you can start, then you can start drilling down and you actually have something to look at. Say, here's an idea. Is it, is it viable or is it not? So that's where we're at right now. So there is no clear-cut architectural standard for what, what a building would look like because we don't design them just like they do in, you know, Crown Point has like a colonial design uh, requirement along the Broadway corridor. Uh, we don't have a particular architectural standard. We just have a uh, material standard within our ordinance. All right, and then one of the quick questions I was, do you guys know when the RFP is going to be, or a time frame you're, you're kind of looking at to kick the tire? Pro probably towards the end of the year into the beginning of next year, do you think? Because uh, we're, we're going to take the ideas and the comments from the, from the audience here tonight, uh, incorporate some of that into the RFP process. Uh, we're, we're listening to the residents, and, you know, we're going to be back here. What, what we got back? Here's what we got. Makes sense. Yep. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. <clears throat> and also, Bob, I would think that it would be important to let the public know that uh, for the people that are watching this tonight and will watch it in the future, they can always call the staff at any time with a question, or they can email sure. or, or t well, text message or Facebook or whatever. No, uh, email. Uh, Email, email would probably be best, it would, yeah, be to e best. would be to email the town with your uh, ideas, opinions, or questions. There's, I'm sure there's a lot of public people out there that are watching that have a lot of questions, so. That email yeah, and our, our contact information for each council member is on the website as well. Um, we'll stick around for a few minutes afterwards if you'd like to get our contact information. Yes. Can you come up to the microphone, please? I just had one additional question um, on the topic of viability of ideas. Did you, um, I don't think it's been mentioned, have we done or have you guys um, done like soil testing and has there been any environmental uh, research done on the racetrack itself to see um, if there's going to be any environmental obstacles in the way prior to development or, you know, if there's going to be any issues with the type of developments that you're looking into doing, whether that's business, recreational, anything like that, has any of that research been done before we put the cart before the horse, or has all that been done? Just curious. The, the, the short answer to that is there was an environmental phase, what they call a phase one study done on the property in 2004. Um, so unless there was a radical spill out there or something like that, which I don't, Believe there any of that happened. Uh, the property was generally clean. There's a couple. There were a couple little small areas of of concern. There's a wetland there just to the north of the track on the back end of the oval, uh, right there. There's a there's a wetland area in there. There's a, there's a water standing water in. The, so you know, that's all would be all part of. I'm sure any anybody that's looking at it, that's going to be part of the review. But there was never no glaring environmental challenges on the property. And was that done as a, was that cleared to be done as a development for a, um, like a commercial property, or does it for have, residential? For residential, yes. okay. So that would probably be cleared then for recreational as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comment or question? And the answer is that uh, we put out there tonight, maybe we can also have that done and put in the newsletter so people are aware of what was, you know, taking place here tonight. Mm -hmm. Just real quick. So with the surrounding land that you guys are looking to acquire, have you acquired anything yet? Or we, we have still offers. in talks with We them? have offers out and have been in discussion with property owners. There was somebody on their way up. There you are. Good evening. <laughs> Drew Corsoletti, 2910 Morningside Drive. Um, I've got a couple of questions for clarification first um, to you guys. So the committee has within their scope or their realm 
to say this is not what we want, right? Uh, an Amazon facility or something, right? The large storage. Everything is decided upon by the Redevelopment Commission, your plan commission, and any other commission, ultimately with the town council. Right, but uh, my understanding and limited understanding is they put guidance on what they didn't want to come in, right? Correct. Th Correct. Those, those few things. So the residents, the majority of everybody in here that's come up to talk today has said they didn't want a business plan. What's stopping you from adding that as one of your guidance? Say, we don't want a business park in here. We're going to look for a developer that's going to do a 18-hole kitty golf course and a park and some splash pads or whatever else. Volleyball fields that we can freeze over in the wintertime, so it's all seasons. You know, it's not something we live in the Chicagoland area. It's cold as hell. We get snow like crazy, right? So we need something that we can do with the kids November to March, November to April. Um, something that's outdoor, indoor, whatever, but what's stopping you guys from going back to the request for quotes or proposals, however it's verbalized, and saying, you know what, the residents have spoken, we're not doing a business park, we want a developer that's willing to buy or go through whatever steps you guys have in place, but for what the residents want. Nothing's preventing us from doing that. Okay. No. And I mean, there were four, three and a half answers that also said the same thing. You guys would rather see recreational. I know you were a big opponent. And then we did have one politician answer. <laughs> no offense, but that was a very political answer. Oh, right. <laughs> it, it, I mean, I'm just. I'm and just you're well within I'm your just, right. I'm just being honest with you. It's just, you know, if there's a plan that we could put a park district that is going, I mean, a business district that is going to be closer up to 30 and is not going to get into the way of the park and the, and the residents and that. Why not? So where would that entrance be? Off of Harvest, where the light is existing? Or are you looking at putting an additional I think, light? I think that's why the RFP process goes through, so you can see what the concept of how the site would look. You know, and, and even if the RFP, so let's say we, we get response to the RFP and we find a developer that uh, we want to work with, and he comes up with a concept. That still doesn't cut anything in stone. Right, but you know, shouldn't, since Sherville owns the property, shouldn't that planning come from Sherville first and say this is how we want it to look, rather yes. than let somebody else come in we and would, say? We would hire somebody to do that. Okay. Well, for, no, we wouldn't do that. Mr. Chairman, for, and, and Bob, you're right, because first of all, when you're dealing with US 30, you're gonna have to be dealing with, um, with the state <laughs> uh, to put a stoplight there, you know, so. Right. And then one last thing, I'm an employee of a Fortune 100 company, and we were told last week that we are in basically infinity. Non-workers that need to be customer-based are all gonna be working from home. So that's another reason why I know a lot of people brought it up that you know businesses are not gonna be staffing anymore, they're going to flex workers or people that only report to the office one or two days a week. I can't see the need for a, build, a business that's not gonna staff it all the time. And I mean, we're seeing it in the city of Chicago. I know they've got tax burdens there, but everybody's moving out of industrial complexes and going to a work from home base. And you know, people are upgrading their internet speeds at home so they can work from home and the businesses are gonna be shuttering. So I'd rather see the green space, me personally, for my family, my kids, I'd rather see the green space, the, the recreation area. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? I guess I'd just like to say one thing, Rob, you had asked the question, if, if, uh, if the plan came back and there was a business park there, why wouldn't we? Well, I guess the answer that I think a lot of us would give is because we don't want it, I, that's why. No, I understand that. I'm, I'm not saying that we should put it, I'm saying, like I told you before, when I gave my answer, I said that we were, we were talking about, when we first bought this, the plan was to sell the front by 30. Sure. And give the rest of it to the parks district. If this business park comes through and it's and it's up there by 30, and it doesn't have anything really interfering with the park, and their entrance from 30, their in entrance and exit from 30 is going to be from 30. Well, I don't know if that's really a big problem then. F fair enough. Yes. Yes. That, that, I guess when when you guys are saying business park, no. a lot of us have it in our minds that we're talking all of that because whether we massive. Look 
Whether um, we look at that or we, we don't and we say, okay, the consensus is let's sell the front. Sure. And the rest of it is going to be park. Anything can go there. A hotel can go there. A restaurant can go there. Sure. Yes. You know, so that is exactly what I meant. So thank you for coming back up yes. so I can okay. clarify thank you. that. Thank you. Anyone else? At this point, I'll close the public comment and I'll, uh, staff, are there any final comments before we adjourn the meeting? I think it was great. We got some great comments. Um, you know, this, this was the whole reason for this. But again, we're at a very beginning stage. All we're trying to do is get all the perspective of what, what could happen here. And uh, we'll certainly keep sharing that with you as the process moves along. Council members? Well, I just want to say one thing. It is really good to see a lot of people come out and be concerned. Um, we are here every month, second Wednesday. We're lucky if two people are out in the audience. So, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, kind of a shame in a way that something has to happen that somebody that, that a neighborhood doesn't agree on to bring everybody out. But it certainly is great, though, to see you guys. And, you know, I appreciate all your comments, and I'm sure everybody else does. And uh, we are going to keep everybody in touch. So thank you again for your time tonight. Yeah, and I'll just say, too, you know, this is really the first time we've been through this process that the town has owned such a significant piece of property where we had to go out for bid or consider other possibilities. This is the first time, you know, and it's a great process. It's been open-ended. Uh, as Councilman Getzloff said, it's great to see everybody here um, to get your feedback. You know, we had great turnout for the public hearing on the IURC. Um, your voices are stronger than you think. Um, so I would just like to close my comments by thanking all of you for coming out here and providing your opinions. Um, it's very meaningful to all of us. We all live here too. And we, we want to do what's best for all of our, our taxpayers. I appreciate putting a name with a face with so many of you that we've spoken to over the last month to actually see you. I appreciate uh, you coming out. Yeah, yes, thank you very much for everyone coming out. Uh, Dan, do you have a, a people, can you tell us if there's people watching from? Yeah, okay. Well, well we thank them also, yes. Um, thank you guys. Um, uh, this was a good process for us. I'm new to the council. Um, Robin and I came on, you know, almost two years ago. So this is, this is new to us. Uh, we we weren't part of the process when we when we uh, as a council purchased the the uh, property, so uh, for for me coming into this, it's been a little bit uh, new and and difficult. One of the things that I constantly struggle with in Sherville, and I hear it from every resident. It seems like that I talk to, they want Bulldog Park or they want downtown Valpo or they want something from, you know, downtown Hammond with the, with the venue there or, or Whiting or something like this. Um, and I constantly struggle because, I got to be honest, I liked Cherville because it was a small community and the festivals were small and my kids, I got five kids, I, I can afford and I can enjoy a small town festival and every year... I hate to say it, our festival gets less fun in Cherville because of how crowded it is, because of all the people coming from outside of town to come to our festival, making it undesirable. Fireworks, it's more and more crazy. I can't believe that you guys all want more parking in your subdivision and more people walking through your subdivision and you want a giant venue put at Rorman Park where we're going to bring in 10,000 people to come and listen to a giant concert. I, I don't want that. And I got to admit, I struggle with it constantly because I hear from people repeatedly, why can't we do Bulldog Park at Rorman? Or why can't we do Bulldog Park? Guess what? I don't want Bulldog Park because I came to Cherville because I liked small town festivals. I liked going to the park and being able to run and not see 400 people on the trail and not see I, 
I understand it's there's a big I, I, I'm not arguing with you I just I'm trying to give my perspective on where I come from when it when people talk to me about make it bigger make it bigger make it better I avoid rock and rail I avoid the festival of lakes I avoid all these things because one they're expensive they're not kid friendly they are not at all. I, I don't know if you guys bring your kids to those events, but I don't because they are drunk fests, and I don't want to see that in our in our Cherville parks and our Cherville festivals, you know. Um, in and so I struggle with it. And everybody wants amenities, and everybody wants additions to Roman Park. And what I want, and I'm just giving my perspective. I want to add to Roman Park, but I want to add to Roman Park in a, in a way that's smart for our community. And I am not 100% in favor of making some giant venue that's going to bring in five, ten thousand 10,000 people every single weekend to your guys' back doors and make it so that you guys are dealing with all this traffic you guys are concerned about traffic on 30 now. Imagine what it's going to look like when we have those events. Imagine what uh, what it's going to look like when we have all that stuff there. And yeah, I think. Well, I'm not trying to create a fear. To, I'm just trying to give my perspective of what I don't want to see right at Roman Park because I think that that's scary from from a perspective of security for people walking around. You draw in too large of a crowd, and it, it creates problems, and that's not what we want either. So I, I just want to, I guess, put it out there because I want to make sure we're on the same page we want a balanced approach to, to what we add to Roman Park. We don't want to go overboard and go crazy, in my opinion. That's just my one perspective. Thank you, Councilman. Hold on. We were, yeah, let's, uh, I want to make sure we capture all the comments. I did close the public comment uh, for the meeting. Um, I wanted to make sure you were all heard. Thank you for being here. Thank you to town staff. Karen Larman, thank you for being here. Uh, council members. Um, it's been an education. It's been a good evening. So I hope you thought the same. And uh, if you'd like to speak with us afterwards, we'll be here for a little bit. Chairman? Yes. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Meetings adjourned. Thank you.